Hello everyone, it's been a while since I did a still life painting. So while I'm still working on the second book lesson, maybe I can do a still life painting but with a twist. So instead of doing a study from a still life, maybe I can create a new one from imagination using concept art techniques. So in this session, it's time to do the still life in a red theme. So in the first still life, I did the tropical still life in green and yellow. The second still life was in white, white serenity. And now I'm gonna do one in red. But this time I'm gonna create one from imagination. So I'm gonna take you step by step from thumbnailing to choosing items from different reference photos and then painting the whole thing together. This technique can be used for creating characters, landscape, environments or anything else you want to create. So let's dive in and see what we can do with this painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is thumbnailing. This process is important to create random ideas out of nowhere. Just putting ideas on paper. You don't have to worry about details, you don't have to worry about colors or anything. Just black and white, simple two to three values and that's it. Just draw ideas on paper as much as you can. So I'm gonna do about nine ideas here. What I'm trying to do is to see certain shapes, certain element of a still life in a certain arrangement. Of course I have looked at many many references so I can have enough information to create these ideas from. So I'm only taking about two to three minutes on each thumbnail, putting the ideas out there, arranging the items in certain way, applying the light and shadow in the way that it can uh, look interesting and then moving on to the next idea. And hopefully from these nines I can pick about three add more details to them and then pick one of them for the final painting. Right now I don't even have any idea of what are the items I'm gonna use in the still life. So I'm putting random shapes, some sort of fruits, flowers, glasses, pots and so on. Eventually when you do all these ideas one of them or two of them gonna just speak to you. It's gonna look interesting. You're gonna start seeing more into it in what we call a happy accident. When you are drawing something random and something just pops out of the painting. The one I'm doing right now is gonna be the fifth one and this is the one I showed for the final painting. I already liked it as I was painting it but I decided to move on and see what else I can create. So as I said don't worry about details, don't worry about colors, just try to visualize in your mind the still life that you want to paint and move and rearrange the elements as much as you can. Change shapes, change sizes, change the elements themselves and change the values and light direction. You can make the light from the top from the left, from the right, or even from the side. So when I'm done with the nine thumbnails, I picked up three that I like and I decided to add a bit more details to them. So I make them a bit bigger and do more detailing on them. Just clean up the shapes a little bit, take more decisions on the light direction, the reflections, uh, add a bit more values in between the general values. So maybe two values for the light, two values for the shadows and two values for the mid-tone instead of three, we have six. So I can have a bit more solid idea of I'm gonna paint in the final painting. So this first one is very simple, very delicate and very nice to, to paint uh, and I can actually take it to the final but I thought let's see what else I can do. The second one is very interesting from the value perspective. The light is very strong on the left and everything else is probably in the shadows. So this is what we call a low key painting. Two thirds of the painting in the dark value and one third in the light value. So that makes it a low key painting. The 
The final one which I'm gonna take to the final, I like that it has different elements to paint. There's uh, pots, there's vases and flowers, a violin, some fruits maybe. So I like that it is more compact and the light is going all the way from left to the right. So it's a bit more balanced. But even though I chose the third one, I decided to take elements from the first and the second and add it to the final painting. So you can do anything you want here. If you like an element from a painting you did, take it and add it to the final painting you decided to go with. And when you are done with the final thumbnail, this is what you can do with it. Start searching for still life that you like. Reference photos from all the elements that you want. You want a violin, you want fruit, you want you want glasses, you want vases, flowers, all of these elements you can find online. And pick the best ones that you want to paint. Arrange them around the painting that you want to do and start picking elements from the reference photo and add it to the thumbnail that you already did. So for example, I take this fruit from here, the vase from here, the violin from that image, the tomatoes from the one on the right, the flowers on the left, even if the colors didn't match, I can change the colors in Photoshop and paint it as I wanted in the final painting. So now I'm adding the reference photo on top of the thumbnail that I did. Now of course, sometimes the perspective is different, the values are different, but this is what we're gonna do in the final painting. We're gonna unify the values, the perspective, the light source, the colors of the elements to make it look like that I did the final arrangement and took the picture in my own studio. But no one will know why you did this because this is will be all in your personal research phase of the painting. So as you can see, I'm trying to see the elements, how they fit together, uh, the colors, the sizes. All of this I'm trying to decide before I even start the first line in the painting. And even when I'm done with this uh, arrangement, the final shapes will be completely different from the reference photo because none of them will fit exactly 100% the idea in your mind. So you have to have an artistic license in what you can change and what you can rearrange and reshape in your final painting. So this is the final arrangement and the final sizes. As you can see here, the uh, lighting on the elements are all wrong. Some elements have the light from the left, some have the light from the right, some have the light from the top, the perspective may be wrong, uh, but all of this will be unified in the final painting. That will be your job. Your initial job of uh, studying the reference is done. Now the rest of it will be on you to unify it toward one light source, or two if you want and one perspective and unified values and colors now when we are done with the arrangement we can basically trace the whole thing some artists actually do trace the mixed reference photo just to make things easier and faster but i'm not in a hurry here so i'm gonna draw the whole thing from the start but if you want to trace it and then paint it yourself that's completely fine but if you want to add to your study and to your visual library of course you have to draw the whole thing from the start and the good thing is when you are redrawing the whole thing you can reshape the elements you can change the sizes the perspective to make it fit to the vision in your own imagination you don't have to stick to the reference photo at all so as you can see i'm drawing the basic shape of the elements uh, i'm changing the 
sizes, the intersections between the elements because I don't want it to look like I just cut a few elements here and there and stick it together. I want it to look like this is an actual arrangement that happened naturally, not by Photoshop, of course. So now I'm done with the basic layer of drawing, I start detailing the elements one by one. Taking in consideration the perspective lines and the sizes of the elements. I want the base of flowers to be the center point of the image. So I start with it first and then add the flowers and the little seeds or fruits that wasn't the actual uh, flower arrangement but make it look like uh, one arrangement. And then I'll start with the violin. The size of the violin has to be a bit bigger so the top of it won't fit the uh, painting but that's okay because it's a side element. It's not the main focus of the painting. If it was the main focus it's better to have the whole element included in the painting. And here's what, what I was talking about making the elements intersect with each other. So don't put the elements side by side like touching on tangent, it will look really bad. You have to make things look behind or front of the other elements so they can look more interesting. And now I'm doing the glass and the main button. Again, don't worry too much about the details in this phase, just the main shape of the elements because all of this will be covered underneath the painting layers. As you can see from this element, I remove the plate underneath it because I don't need it in this uh, image, so I just need the fruit itself. And now in this uh, element, it was a plate of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, but I'm going to turn it into f uh, a plate of grapes in this painting. So I'm not really strict with the elements 100%, you can change whatever you want. Now I don't know if I added too much elements for this uh, still life but uh, most of the still life that I like are really crowded. Some of them are simple and very elegant but I like the crowdedness of, uh, of the still life. It really, it really add more complexity to your painting and my point in this painting is to study so why not just add more? Okay, now I'm done with the main drawing. I'm gonna do a quick value study for the whole painting. Just five minutes to set the tone of the painting for me to understand where the light is coming from and uh, what elements are gonna be more bright than the other. Creating the idea and the concept is the hardest part of the painting. Now I'm done with that. I have the idea, I have the elements. Now you can put some audiobooks, podcasts or music and just enjoy the painting process. And I started with the bottle and the glass, the closest element to the light source. And at this point, I'm not, I'm not looking at the reference photo because there isn't a correct reference photo for these elements. 
So I'm taking the shape from the reference photo and adding the values all from what I know from my own experience of painting. I know this is a glass, I know this is a liquid, so I know what the light will do when it hit the glass or the liquid. In the photos they are from the left or from the right or from the top. So I know the interaction between the light and this material. But in my mind, I just change the direction of the light. You have to keep studying to a point that you can change the element or the light in your mind like you do in a 3D program. Just move the light and in your mind's eye, you can see the light hit the elements in your brain as if you are seeing it with your own eyes. I don't know if I explained this correctly, but just imagine you are making this scene in a 3D program and you are moving the light source and you can see the light hitting all the elements differently. If you can do this in your mind, you can do it on the painting. So the cherry tomatoes were completely in the shadows in the reference photo so I'm trying to change it that the light is hitting from the top left. Again this is the first layer of many many correction and addition and value fixing in the next 15 to 16 hours of painting. I can also add some textures as I'm going some pattern of uh, yellow spots that you can see in the tomatoes. In this photo we have the light hitting from the right so i have to do it from the left side so you have to know what wood would look like under the light and in the shadows how i think this is silk so it will be more shiny under the light and darker in the shadows this kind of exercise will really improve your skill to create ideas out of nowhere so if you were like me i, I had a lot of trouble to create my own ideas without reference which was a bad idea to start with you cannot create ideas without reference right from the start so this is really helpful to you to just take 10 20 images for any subject you want you want to create characters you want to create uh, environment landscape search for 10 20 reference photos and choose the element that you like in each one of them combine them together and do your thumbnailing for ideas if you want uh, choose the elements from each reference photo that you like and try to arrange the ideas in a way that fits your idea because even if you are a, a beginner artist you still have the same quality of ideas like the professional artist but the problem is the professional artist can actually draw them you can't yet but the ideas are there so if you can do this method to simplify the way of generating ideas from existing designs it will be the first step for you to start from to hopefully after a lot of study and practice you can create your own ideas using reference but faster and more efficient you don't have to go through all this process to create an idea you can do it from thumbnailing to painting right away but you have to go through this process first before you can do this on your own 
Now I did speed this process up a little bit because the total time of the painting was about 16 hours and I'm trying to fit the whole thing in one hour. So the first part of creating the idea is a bit uh, real time but the painting process is about 20 times faster than the real time. So I'm trying to fit 16 hours in one hour. But this video isn't about how to paint. I already have a lot of uh, videos about that. This video is about how to create your own idea. You really need to try this even with simple ideas. Still life is very easy to start with. There is no portraits to be confused about. You don't have to worry about character armor or uh, the weapon. You don't have to worry about the landscape, the architecture, the environment. So this is why it's either to start with still life rather than any more complicated subject. Start with still life and see if you are good at it. Keep making the subject more complicated. So maybe start with fruit and glasses from different reference images. Uh, one bowl of fruit or two bottles and two glasses from three or four different reference images. Try to combine them in one painting on your own. And then maybe draw three or four variations of this arrangement and paint all four of them. And see how you, how you are creating these ideas. Because the final painting of your arrangement is your original art. There is no reference for it out there. So this is your own idea. The idea that you created in your mind and you painted it using this reference photo. If you feel confident, go a bit further. Add more elements. Change the light from one direction to the other. Start making things more complicated. Maybe add two lights. Maybe add more elements like a, a skull or uh, some papers or fabric. And once you are confident with what you can do with this uh, exercise, start doing characters, landscape, environment. Landscape is a bit easier than uh, character, to be honest. You can add different trees from different photos, uh, ships, cars from different reference into one and then start as some people and then start with the characters maybe research five characters and take the portrait from one the the torso armor from the other the hands and legs from one uh, photo and then the armor and then the weapons from the fifth one and try combining them into one character of course you have to change the direction of the character you have to change the armor maybe start first with five reference photos that all are in the same position and then start changing the position so th the point is start easy always start on easy mode and then start making things more and more complicated adding more and more problems that you want to solve because this is what art is all about solving problems and when you change your exercises from just copying what you see to copying what you see with a twist you are making it look like a video game changing the level of the skill on every exercise so you go from easy to normal to hardcore to insanity and so on so you can change the way you study to make it more fun so when you start with easy element in still life and then go all the way to character design you are creating ideas you are finally breaking out from just copying this is what the third book is all about. This is a preview for what I want to do in the third book. The third book is the most interesting one for me. Because the first and the second is what I did for the past 5-10 years. The third book is just the past 3 or 4 years of my experience. That's why it's more for me than for you, to be honest. Because I'm practicing as I'm teaching in the same way. So it's really going to be exciting to do all the exercises that I want to do in the third book. That's probably one of them right now. But uh, hopefully we'll get to see more complicated and more hardcore levels of creating your idea. From using reference photos to finally creating your own idea right from your mind. With the help of a reference photo all the way to painting them right away. As for now, I'm still doing the values, trying to make sure that the light is going dimmer and dimmer as you go from the left to the right. 
because the light source is like a window on the left and as you go from the left the light is decaying from the left to the right so it's gonna get dimmer and the shadows will get stronger and then we can re-emphasize the same idea with colors that is gonna be starting from yellow tint light all the way to the cool blue shadows adding values to the painting is the heart of the painting drawing it will take about 15 20 minutes adding colors if you did the values correctly will take about an hour or two but the whole 13 hours of this painting was just adding values i'm not just adding values from looking at the reference photo there is no reference for this so all the values here are coming just from my own mind and that's what i like about these exercises there is no downtime there is no automatic painting here you are thinking about this every minute your mind is sharp your mind is right there with you trying to solve what is this element gonna look like if the light hits it from this place what is the material of the element what if the foreground element is obstructing the light on that other element in the mid-ground or in the background so you have to know what element is casting shadow on the other elements that's why the second book is important the values and casting shadows it's not gonna be all about geometrical shape it's gonna start with organic shape which is the lesson i'm working on as we speak i'm not gonna do a new lesson for the second book it's more like more exercises for the first lesson but now we are going from geometrical shape to architectural shape to engineering shape to organic shape and finally to the portraits and the human skull how they gonna react under the light how to draw the one two three values on them so as i mentioned uh, we go from easy all the way to hard and then to finally understand the lesson itself by applying it to real world examples.
So for straight lines, I'm using the pen tool. That's why every time uh, someone who say I can't draw a straight line, I can't do it either. My tablet is so small, I can't actually draw a straight line because I can't use my whole arm to draw a straight line. So I have to use a pen tool. So if you can draw a straight line, that's fine. There is a tool for it. The important thing is to understand the fundamentals of art and drawing straight lines isn't one of them. So now I'm adding the table and the shadows from the elements on the table and finally the last part on the right is the flower and the strawberries. Now the reason I'm adding these small elements here and there I like to add the reflection from these small elements on the bigger ones. It will make it more interesting. See I put the main uh, object of this uh, of this painting in the middle so everything around it especially that it's made from glass everything around it will cast reflection on this element so you won't have just one color or one shadow you will have a range of colors hitting from each side and you're gonna see that in the coloring section Uh, I'm adding some textures as well as I'm painting it but you can leave the textures as a last section of the painting you can do the drawing first then the values then the colors and the texture will be the last part of your painting but as this is a study I um, don't want to add some textures as I go along finally adding some fabric on the right everything I'm doing here is a bit more faster than it should be. I mean this painting took about 16 hours but I can easily take another 30 or 40 hours to finish this correctly. I can take my time with every piece of strawberry and add more details to it but this is not the idea here. The idea is just the first 10-20 minutes of this painting. The rest of it is just blowing some steam, having some fun. That's the whole point of this painting. But I don't want to have so much fun that I waste about 50 hours on it because I'm not gonna sell it after all. Or maybe I'm gonna put it on a store online, I don't know. I mean this is an original painting, I can actually sell this painting. Because it's mine, it's not fan art, it's not uh, from a photo that I didn't ask for permission to paint or sell. This is actually mine, I can sell this without any regret or any guilty feelings. Because I created this out of 20 or so images, so this is no longer a copied painting. If I do decide to sell it, I will put the link in the description. But that's the point. I'm not trying to spend 50 hours on it because it's not for a client. It's just a study. If you're gonna waste 50 hours on a study, you have to be learning from it. And the learning section for me in this painting was the first 20 minutes. The rest is already things I know. I mean, I do solve some value problems here, but the detailing part shouldn't take 50 hours if it's not for commercial use because the detailing part is something i did for many 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 hours before and i'm not learning anything new in this painting by hyper detailing it so i'm just doing it as fast as possible just to enjoy my time so that's the point actually try to be efficient with your study once you learned everything you want in a painting move on to the next unless it's a commercial use then by all means take your time with it but in a study, don't take so much time on it. I did that when I first started, I used to put three months in one painting and I get really bored of it and I'm not learning anything new. 
but I just was a perfectionist. Being a perfectionist is a really harmful, harmful habit when you are starting. It's gonna be one of the 50 top mistakes I'm gonna actually add in this series because it's destructive when you are starting and you have to finish everything to the last details and it's not gonna look good after all. You have to be faster, you have to be more efficient, especially when you are studying. Okay, now I'm done with the main values of all the elements. I step back from the painting and I start looking at the painting as a whole. Zooming in will make you focus on one certain element. You have to see the whole painting so you can make sure your values are working together. And as you can see here, there is a foreground, middle ground and a background. And the color and the values have to be more harmonized with each other. So the background will be more lighter from the left to the right and then the middle ground will be more focused on the vase with the flowers and the foreground will be the more contrasted and more uh, color heavy on the elements in the foreground. So now I'm doing the second layer. I already merged the whole layers I did before and now I'm adding a second layer of details to connect the elements together. Adding more reflection, refractions on different elements to make this painting tight together and the elements speak to each other as if they are put in reality next to each other. And I'm adding some separation between the layers, between the foreground, the middle ground, the background, some shadows in between, some highlight in between, and some mist textures as well. Now you can see in the lower part of the vase, the light is more concentrated on a single point. That's called a caustic effect. The liquid is focusing the light as a magnifier to the bottom side of the vase, reflecting highlight on the other side. So it's not like adding highlight to a solid object or a fake object. The light will actually go through the liquid and be more focused on the other side, depending on the liquids, of course. If it's a clear liquid, there will be that effect. If it was a thick liquid like we see on the left, it will be less visible. So now mainly the values are done and the painting look really good and read well. Even when I'm zoomed out, I can see it really fitting together as if I'm looking at this as a reference photo. So now we can add the colors. So the first layer of colors is the color layer of course, as I mentioned before there are three layers, the colors, the overlay and the multiply. The colors are just for the local color of the element, the overlay is for the highlight and the light effect on the material and finally the multiply is for the shadows, adding more contrast to the objects. So right here I'm not worried about the edge details or the final look of the elements. 
This will be corrected in the overlay and the multiply. I'm just concentrating here on the local colors of the objects. And as I mentioned before, when the values are correct and working correctly, you don't have to worry about them here. You just have to add colors and make things look nice. So the more time you spend on the values, the less time you're gonna spend on colors. So this is the first layer of the colors, now we can add the overlay. And as you can see, the minute I start with the overlay colors, everything starts tying in together. They are starting to look really really nice. This is not the final layer we're gonna do here, because even with the overlay and the multiply and the colors, you still have to adjust the final detail to make things look a bit more realistic. You still have to add a final normal layer to just add a manual details on every element so they can look more real. There is no automatic correction to the colors. You have to go in manually and add the final tuning and the final touches on the painting. But as of now, they are really looking really nice, especially the tomatoes. For some reason, this painting is actually making me really hungry. The fruits and the cherry tomatoes are looking really nice. You can see sometimes I'm turning the color layer on and off because the values aren't working correctly with the color. So I'm going back to the value layer and adding more shadows or more highlight so they can affect the colors correctly. Because the color layer, the overlay layer and the multiply layer will work to a certain level. But if the values underneath them aren't working correctly, you can go back to the values and adjust them a little bit to work correctly. Now I had to adjust the cell colors a little bit here because I wasn't 100% sure of what colors I want to see because I didn't want to add uh, uh, very different colors because this is uh, a red theme painting as I mentioned in the title so I want the colors and the cell lines to work along the red colors not very far away I probably shouldn't add the blue one maybe I should left the green and the yellow one so as you can see everything is starting to look very vibrant and very lifelike. Now 
and the textures are really working great with the with the colors for example this red jar is having highlight in different layers like it was painted first in yellow and then another layer of red it looks like painting a car in a sparkly paint so even the highlight isn't just a straight line it dissolves all over the material itself Now here I have some problem with the flowers, they are looking really bright, the flowers that I wanted is more dark, more uh, velvet like and I took the uh, selection from the first file adding it to the other and then I change the value to be darker and as you can see as I change the values to be darker the whole flowers turned to be a bit more darker and velvet like which is what I was looking for so don't be afraid to go back to your value layer and change it as you are doing the color so now that I have the flowers a bit darker I can add more highlight in yellow which is something I couldn't do in the lighter version. Not only values go darker as you go to the right away from the light but also the colors get less vibrant and less chromatic as you go away from the light. As I mentioned in the value lessons the colors in the shadows are less vibrant than the colors in the light. Now that I'm done with the colors, I start to go over the whole painting with another layer of overlay just to tie things together a bit more just like I did with the values one layer isn't enough do another layer and tidy things up all the loose ends, all the missing details just keep going over and over until you are satisfied with the final look and now I'm adding a bit more yellow to the light and blues to the shadows And now I'm finally done with the color layer, now the final layer, the fine tuning and the details layer on a normal blend layer. This is a must, you always miss some values or details in the coloring layers. So it's always better to add more texture, to add more, to tidy up the edges, to add more uh, variety of colors to every single element as you go along and you need a normal layer for that. So mostly what I'm doing here is adding the yellow tint to the highlight areas and the blue tint to the shadow areas so for example the red apple is not all in one color it's not bright red for the highlight and uh, dark red for the shadows it's bright yellow for the highlight red for the midtones and a bluish purple for the shadow adding black and white won't make your paintings look vibrant 
You have to add complementary colors to add the shadows and the light for the elements. It will make them look much much better. Also adding some reflection and refraction sections that I missed in the previous layer. So I'm almost done adding another layer for just uh, fine tuning the painting and then adding my signature and this is it. This is the final painting. It took about 16 hours. I'm not 100% satisfied with it of course. No artist is ever satisfied. So I may be generous by saying maybe 5 to 6 out of 10 C plus or maybe B minus. But I could actually take a lot more time with it but I just wanted to kill two birds with one stone show you the uh, process of creating a still life out of imagination and blowing up some steam by doing this great exercise so i hope you find something useful out of this video i hope you really try this exercise yourself and if you are a beginner start with something simple uh, one fruit a glass or a bottle and try to rearrange the reference photo on two or different uh, paintings try to add the values and understand the light but it hits the objects that you are rearranging and then uh, make it more complicated by adding more complex shapes and more complex elements to your uh, photo maybe adding two light instead of one a yellowish light from the left and maybe a blue light from the right just make it more interesting for yourself and if you are confident as I said you can start with characters landscape and so on so this is it for now before I go I want to thank all my patreons who donated to my channel if you want to donate to my channel please go to patreon slash rainwalker thank you all for your generosity this is it for this video I will come back hopefully next week with the second lesson of the second book hopefully I will be done by then uh, I started with five exercises and now I'm about 50 in. maybe it's gonna be a hundred exercises in one video so I may have to divide it into two or three videos I'm not sure yet I will see in the editing it's really really big that's why the second uh, book is taking much longer than any other series every video is taking about a month and a month and a half to finish but hopefully I will be done next week so until then I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video